All right, here we're going to look at a typical cash flow hedge, and we're going to be looking at an example here of a forecasted purchase. And we're going to have a futures contract here for delivery of 100,000 bushels of grain. The contract start date here is 9-1, and then our contract settlement date here is 11-5. And with this cash flow hedge, we're going to break down here the fair value of this uh, market value of this hedge here is equal to the intrinsic value plus the time value portion of the contract. Now with these cash flow hedges here, we first have to determine the fair change here in our fair value of the um, uh, hedge here or our contract. And here we have to know the futures price. And then the next thing we have to do is we have to determine the change here in our spot rate. And our change in spot rate is our intrinsic value of this contract. And then knowing the fair value here we can determine the change here in the fair value of the contract and then knowing the change in our fair value and the change in our spot right here we can determine the time value of the contract here and that would be the change in the spot forward rate. Okay to determine the fair value or the market value of this contract we start with our futures price here at our start date here of 9-1 and then we compare that to each of the periods that we're looking at. So looking at our 930 period here uh, we would compare that with the 9-1 period take that times the quantity that's under contract and doing arithmetic here you can see it's $3,200 the um, fair value of the contract and then for the 1031 period we go back to our 91 period here and then we compare that to the 1031 period here and you can see again here that the arithmetic it works out to six thousand dollars here for the uh, fair value of this contract and then for the uh, last period here our settlement date here of of 11 5 again we go back to our start date here a future price and we compare that to the date here at 11 5 and then doing the arithmetic on that you can see here we had a $6,100 uh, fair value of the contract. All right to determine the change in our spot rate we look at the change between each period here so looking at our first period here of 930 we compare that to the 91 period here and doing arithmetic times the quantity here under contract we have a $3,800 value here in the change in the spot rate and then for the 1031 period we compare that to the 930 the preceding period here and doing arithmetic we had a $3,000 change here in the spot rate and then for our last period here 11.5 we compare that to the 10.31 period and here again we had a $50 change here in the spot rate. Okay next to determine our change here in fair value and what we're looking at here is a cumulative change here in our market value. So we look at our market value here for uh, looking at our first period here of 9.30 we had a $3,200 fair market value here of the contract and then we subtract uh, the it had a zero value here of 91 so we'd subtract uh, that 32 uh, the zero, uh, zero mark here from 3200 and we got a $3200 change here in fair value and then looking at our next period here at 1031 we take its the fair value here of $6000 and subtract out the $3200 fair value here on 930 and the difference here would be $2,800, the change in fair value. And then for our last period here, 11.5, we take the $6,100 fair value of the contract here and then subtract the previous uh, uh, period here, 1031, of $6,000 from it. And we'd have a $100 change here in fair value. Okay, to determine the change here in the spot forward rate, that's the time value portion of the contract. And how we determine that is we subtract the spot rate or the change in our spot rate here from the change in the fair value of the contract. So looking at our first period here of 930, we had a fair value of uh, change here of $3,200 and the change in spot rate was $3,800. Subtract the two and you have a negative $600 here. And then for our 1031 period here, we had a change fair value change here of $2,800 and then the spot rate change here was 3000 Subtracting the two here we get a negative $200 here change in our spot forward rate. And then for our last period here we had a change in fair value of $100 and then change in spot rate of $50 
and subtracting the two here we have a change of, uh, in our spot forward rate here of fifty dollars okay looking at the journal entries for this cash flow hedge well, I'll just go through them one at a time here on the asset side of the balance sheet we have this a margin account for this futures contract that we have to set up with the dealer and then we have the futures contract itself here as an asset and that's that hedged contract and that's the change here in fair value so we had a positive change in fair value for each period so we debit our increase our futures contract by that amount and then going over here to the stockholders equity side of the, on the balance sheet here we have an unrealized gain or loss here on this futures contract and that's the change here in the spot forward rate or the time value change for the contract and in this case we had a, a, a six hundred and two hundred dollar decrease here or loss so we would increase or debit our unrealized gain and loss for that amount here and then we had that fifty dollar gain here so we'd credit our unrealized gain for that fifty dollar amount and then uh, we also have this other comprehensive income and that's the intrinsic value of the contract and that's the change here in this spot rate so in this case we had a positive change here in spot rate in the spot rate so we'd credit or increase our other comprehensive income here and that's also part of stockholders equity on the balance sheet okay looking at our contract settlement date well the first thing I have to point out here is this margin account we had to set that up here when we entered into this contract so we debited it for seven thousand dollars in this case and then we'd credit or reduce our cash account for that seven thousand dollars and then at the settlement date we'd close out this margin account here for seven thousand dollars and then we debit our cash for that amount here and then the other thing we do is we actually close out this futures contract here and in this case we had a sixty one hundred dollar gain on it so we close that out here and then we would recognize or increase our cash account by sixty one hundred dollars for that uh, um, futures contract okay when we go out and we make our purchase our other comprehensive income here that would be close to the cost of goods sold account here as part of net income so we would debit our other comprehensive income here for sixty eight hundred and fifty dollars and then we'd credit or reduce our cost of goods sold here by that amount of sixty eight hundred and fifty dollars and then the unrealized gain or loss here uh, we would close that to uh, our gain or loss here as part of net income so we'd credit our unrealized gain or loss here for seven hundred and fifty dollars and we debit or in increase our loss here that we recognize here for seven hundred and fifty dollars okay in summary when looking at a cash flow hedge the futures contract here is broken down between the time value portion here which is an unrealized gain or loss here as part of stockholders equity on the balance sheet and the intrinsic value portion here which is part of other comprehensive income which is also part of stockholders equity on the balance sheet and then when the uh, product is actually purchased here the unrealized gain or loss here gets recognized here as a gain or loss as part of net income and then the other comprehensive uh, income here portion which is the intrinsic value of the contract that gets recognized here as cost of goods sold as part of net income and then the futures contract itself here gets close to the cash account here on the balance sheet